Hi, in this video I'm explaining how to use Mathematica to implement something called Euler's method, which is a method for approximating solutions to initial value problems for systems of differential equations. We're going to focus on two-dimensional systems of first-order differential equations. I want to first show you how to just modify my code very quickly to get the answer that you want without trying to understand the code too much. And then, for the rest of the time, I will focus as much as I can in a fairly short amount of time on trying to understand how the code works. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom of this notebook and I'm going to show you a snippet of code that you could either copy and paste if you have access to this notebook or type out to yourself to implement Euler's method. The first thing you see here is the value of the step size delta t. I've set it equal to 0.1. You could change it to something else if you like, like 0.25. This next formula that you see here is defining the vector field for the system of differential equations. It's essentially the right-hand sides of the system. dx dt in this case equals negative y, that's the first component of this vector field, and dy dt equals x, that's the second component. If you had a different vector field, for example, if it was dy dt equals x plus 2y, and go back to the first one, if it was um, dx dt equals negative y plus x squared, you could make a change like that to implement Euler's method in this situation. What else should be changed? Uh, these two numbers represent the initial conditions, the initial values of x and y. I've set them to be 1 and 0. This is the initial time, which is usually 0. If you want to pick a different initial condition, like say x is 0.1 and y is 0.2, you can make that change right there. I'm still going to keep time starting at 0. And if I want to approximate the solution of the corresponding system of differential equations at time equals 2 based on the fact that I picked delta t to be 0.25 I'd want to go out 8 steps in the iteration not 40 so I'm going to change this 40 to an 8 now you can enter this code and see what results now what results is a list of points that approximate the true solution of the corresponding initial value problem based on differential equations where these expressions of the right-hand sides, dx dt equals negative y plus x squared, and dy dt equals x plus 2y. With this initial condition, x is 0.1, y is 0.2, after eight iterations based on delta t being 0.25, which again means this last point is going to approximate the true solution at time equals uh, 2. Uh, 8 times 0.25 is 2. You can plot this using list plot. Uh, by the way, this notation here, EM no time, the EM stands for Euler's method. I just picked this. This is the name of this list. So I can plot EM no time with list plot by just typing in, in here like this, and I see a bunch of points that approximate the solution. I can join those points by adding an option, joined error true, and then I can join those points then with this polygonal curve that is an approximation to the so true solution starting at time equals zero over here and ending at time equals two over here. All right, so that's the quick and easy way to just modify this without trying to understand what's going on here. But as far as the rest of the notebook goes, I want to quickly try to go through what I've written here. You're probably going to want to pause it if you don't have this, a copy of this and read what I have written here, maybe even pause it right now. I'm going to go ahead and explain as fast as I can what's going on in this notebook. So uh, this is referring to an exercise in my differential equations book that I use uh, by Blanchard, Devaney, and Hall in section 2.5, which is about Euler's method in two dimensions. It's a simple system of differential equations. dx dt equals negative y, dy dt equals x. That's linear. Initial condition y of 0 is 1, 0. The true solution is this particular parametric curve. That's easy to find for this particular case. You can check it. All right, but we want to approximate it with Euler's method, and to use nest list like I've been doing here, you need to understand what iteration is. And so I explained it in this paragraph with an example. If you've got a function f of x, f of x equals x squared, we could iterate a function like that by essentially applying this recursive equation that you see here, x sub k plus 1 equals f of x sub k. You pick an initial condition, x sub 0, or x naught for short, is 2, for example. And you use the iterative recursive equation to find x1, x2, x3, etc. in this way. x1 is 2 squared, which is 4. x2 is 4 squared, which is 16. x3 is 16 squared, which is 256, etc. I could use a different initial condition like 0.9 and get different numbers. Nest list will implement this. Here you see this example. I can enter this code and I get two different outputs based on these two different initial conditions. The syntax is like this. You see nest lists. 
that is a built-in mathematic command. The first input for nestlist is the function, in this case f of x equals x squared. The second input is the initial condition, 2 in this first list, 0.9 in the second list. And the third number is the number of iterations you want it to do. In this case, I made it 7. If you count how many jumps here, there are going to be 7 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is this last number, which is the square of the second to last number there. Same kind of thing down here with this one. That's the basic syntax of nestlist, which I have here. You can also apply nestlist to two-dimensional functions like this thing. I've written the inputs and outputs as column vectors. You don't have to do that. You could write them as points. Here we have a two-dimensional input, x, y, which you can think of as a point or a vector. And it gives you a two-dimensional output, first component or first coordinate, x squared minus y, second component or second coordinate, x plus y. For example, if you plug in x equals 3 and y equals 2, you'll get the output 7, 5. You can think of this in vector form. Let me get rid of this double equals there. In vector form like this, uh, that, that is more reminiscent of a single variable equation like we have up here. But y is a vector here, and we can, again, start with an initial condition. In this case, the vector 3, 2. Get 7, 5 for the next one, then 44, 12 for the next one, 19, 24, 56 for the next one. And nestless can implement this. Notice I'm typing this function in with a two-dimensional input and a two-dimensional output, and nestlist does it. It iterates the function and gives you those two-dimensional outputs based on this function, this initial condition, and this number of iterations. How is this related to Euler's method? For Euler's method, we have a two-dimensional initial value problem. There's the differential equation written with both vectors and scalars. These two functions are the right-hand sides of the system of scalar equations, dx dt equals little f and dy dt equals little g. I can think of that as a vector field when I combine them into a vector like this, and then I have an initial condition like this. You've got to pick a time step delta t. You can write Euler's method in this case either in vector form like this, with t being updated like this, or in scalar form like this, going all the way over here. What we can do essentially is we can iterate this process with nestlist by defining a function, a new function that I've called capital G, just to pick something different. If you think about th this and compare this equation with these other equations, I hope it's clear after some thought that iterating g, uh, using g in a recursive form with this equation down here, will implement Euler's method based on picking an initial values for t, x, and y. This is going to be a three function with a three-dimensional input and a three-dimensional output so that we can include the t values in here. This is going to implement Euler's method, I hope you see spend some time thinking about it. For example, uh, if little f is negative y and little g is x, which is our main example back up at the top, and we let z0 be this vector which has the initial t value and the initial x value and the initial y value, then iterating this function is going to produce this list of vectors, this list of points, which include the t values. That, you should check, is implementing Euler's method. I can now use nestlist to run this quickly to get these points. Here initially, they have time involved. 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, etc. because these are three-dimensional. If I'm going to plot it in the xy plane, however, I've got to get rid of time. And that's where I ultimately go down to here and have this extra bit of code here that gets rid of the time coordinate. Um, I won't take the time to explain how that works. I've a couple extra uh, list operations for one very important one called table. Another one, drop, essentially is what I'm using to drop the time component here, the first coordinate with that one. This length command uh, will iterate this process through the length of EM time, however many points are in the list. This particular variable now has the points that are generated by Euler's method just in terms of the x and y coordinates, no time. I can ultimately plot that with list plot. Once it's entered, I don't remember if I entered it. There we go. I can plot that with list plot to get my approximation to the true solution. I can join those dots to make straight line segments, though it looks like a curve. I can combine everything, dots and line segments, to get my approximation. And ultimately, I can also do different delta t's. Here's delta t is 0.5, here delta t is 0.1, and get a bunch of different curves in here showing how everything is related. You see the vector field in the background, 
The purple curve is the actual solution curve, x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t. The red polygonal curve here was when delta t, I believe, was 0.5. Eight steps, eight iterations of Euler's method. This uh, other one, which you might not be able to see, it involves a blue curve between the black dots, is the implementation of Euler's method with delta t equals to 0.1. So you can see that's closer to the actual solution curve. There should be 40 steps for Euler's method there. So that's a quick summary of this notebook and implementing Euler's method in this way. There are other things you can do to implement Euler's method, but probably nest list is ultimately the most efficient way to do it. And I'll end the video there.